Hi guys, DIY Mark with a first look at the new 2020 Samsung refrigerator with the Family Hub touchscreen. These internet connected appliances are becoming more and more popular, so I wanted to give them a look and see if it's a step in the right direction. This is Samsung's newest affordable entry into the smart refrigerator market. I've only had it a month or so, but long enough to begin to see what works well and where the shortfalls are. I'm going to divide this review up into two sections. The tech section, which primarily involves the touch screen and the internet connectivity technology, and the appliance section, which is how well it does at its primary job, which is keeping food cold. Starting with how well the refrigeration part works, this is a counter depth model, meaning it's a shallow in depth to match the depth of standard kitchen countertops. I previously had a fairly high-end KitchenAid refrigerator that I outfitted with panels that matched the rest of my kitchen. It was a 12-year-old unit and it was still performing fairly well, although it was much noisier than the day I got it and was beginning to have some hot and cold spots, meaning once in a while it would freeze my lettuce or provide me with a less than cold beer. So when the right opportunity came to replace it with the Samsung, I jumped on it. I got the Samsung from Home Depot and they delivered the unit, replaced the water line, and moved my old fridge to the garage for me. Although the Samsung doesn't have the wood panels, the stainless physique blends nicely with the rest of my kitchen. It has a modern, sleek, side-by-side -side look with sharply edged thick doors, and of course a large touchscreen mounted in the right-hand panel. As I begin transferring our food to the new unit, I notice this lower-end Samsung lacks adjustability. All of the glass shelves are fixed, as well as the door trays. The freezer top shelf has one alternative position, but that's it. I think this is a cost-saving design decision. Still, they're appropriately placed for my needs, and it really wasn't much of an issue. The inside of the unit is sleek and nicely finished, which makes it easy for cleaning of surfaces. The door bins are clear plastic and fully contain the contents, so if something was to leak out, it won't run down the inside of the fridge wall. The bins snap into the door and are securely mounted. I found the interior lighting of this new Samsung barely adequate. The top mounted LED in the fridge section does a poor job of illuminating stuff on the lower shelves and the drawer bins at the bottom. It could really use a second lamp located somewhere lower in the unit. Operation is nearly silent, barely registering on my sound meter. You have to put an ear right up next to it to hear if it's running. It's a nice surprise after moving the old noisy fridge out. To test the cooling consistency of the fridge, I placed several jars of water in multiple locations and then measured the temp after eight hours using an instant read thermometer. The top shelf was the coldest, a bit surprising since cold air sinks. Nevertheless, it matched the fridge request setting at 37 degrees Fahrenheit. The crisper bins were close at 39 degrees. We've had the fridge loaded up after a big shopping trip and never had any issues with freezing lettuce or humidity buildup in the bins. Water temperature samples that were stored in the top bin of the door were four degrees warmer than the desired temperature, coming in at 41 degrees. The bottom small drawer bin was the worst variance of all, at 42 degrees. What I learned is, if you like your milk cold as possible, don't store it in the door bin. Use the regular shelves. The freezer also works well. The ice maker hardware is much slimmer than my old KitchenAid and took up a lot less space. The ice storage bin releases easily from the door with a squeeze of a couple of levers and makes enough ice for a small cooler or a neighborhood cocktail party. Output was decent going from empty to full in just about 24 hours. New items placed in the freezer froze quickly and our ice cream was always hard. Overall, I think this unit does well with job one, and that's keeping things cold. On the outside of the fridge, it has an indoor ice and water dispenser. The opening is nice and tall and easily fits a tall water bottle or a 32 inch hydro flask. But it lacks a light when filling, so it can be hard to tell when your bottle is full unless it's clear. Also, after having the water filler hit the rim of my bottle a couple of times and splashing water into the floor, 
I found it best to wrap my hand around the bottle or glass and use your finger to actuate the switch. The sleek doors mean that the handles are mounted on the inside edge of the door. Initially, this creates an awkward hand position for grabbing the handles. It took us about a week or so to adapt. Speaking of the doors, they are big and heavy, so they crash each and every time you shut the door. I tried changing the plumb of the doors by adjusting the feet, which helped a bit, but it couldn't match the soft close action of our old KitchenAid. All of the fridge temperature selections are controlled through the touch panel. The panel is marketed as the family hub, and the idea is to use the fridge as a central location to post messages, get the morning news, or search for your favorite recipe. It's a stripped down version of an Android operating system running on a fairly snappy processor. The menus are quick to load and it has smooth transitions from one to the next. Setup is guided and fairly straightforward. After connecting to your home Wi-Fi system, you are presented with a number of terms and end-user license agreements. It actually got annoying. I counted more than four times it made me accept some sort of 20 plus page document where I gave away all my rights to privacy or hold them accountable. To get the full use of the touch panel features, you'll need to load the Samsung Family Hub app onto your phone. The app lets you move photos from your phone to the fridge. Once on the fridge file system, you can choose how they are displayed, such as designating the background wallpaper or having them fade in across the display. You can also doodle or type a note, which will also be displayed every time someone opens the fridge. There is also a voice activated help system called Bixby. I didn't have much luck with it. It has a pretty limited skill set and often replies, I didn't understand that. One interesting feature is that there is an interior camera inside the refrigerator section so you can see the contents of what's inside. And you can bring that image up on your phone when you're away from the house. Kind of like, hey, are we out of apple juice when you're at the grocery store? The rub is, is the camera is a fisheye type lens and you can only see and make out what is very near the camera. It also has a browser, so you can bring up any web page or use Google to search. So you can bring up a recipe from the web while you're cooking. But for my kitchen, these features didn't really add much value. Less than 10 feet away, we have a laptop station that we leave on all the time. Typing on a real keyboard is faster and much less frustrating than trying to type with a single finger touch keyboard or to draw a message. It was fun the first day, fooling around with all the stickers and drawing funny faces, but everybody in the family quickly lost interest and we haven't really used it since. I think this fridge is really a glimpse into the future. I can envision a future version where you can scan your groceries as you put them in and subsequently send you alerts to your phone. Hey, you're low on milk and there's a store a half a mile ahead that has your brand on sale. But that day is not here yet, and the Family Hub quickly lost its luster with my family. So let's talk about cost for a minute. This Samsung fridge is $2,100, which is substantially less than what they were charging just a few years ago. But it's still pretty expensive. Alternatively, you can purchase basically the same fridge without the touch panel for $750 less. And pulling out the touch screen gives you another half cubic foot of space. Since the fridge part of this appliance works pretty well, I think that would be a better option. So I would rate this Samsung Family Hub refrigerator at just three stars, or a C grade. It's a fun idea, but the banana is just too green to eat right now. So I hope this was helpful, and as always, I appreciate you watching.